Well, I was formerly a regional manager for an exhaust entire tyre retail outlet called Standard Motors Centres, which is now dead and gone. It, you know Quick Fit? Yes. Right, well, it was like that. Similar operation. And uh, so in consequence, since I came out of this re recent bout of deeply depressive bipolar affective disorder in early, Mar early May, I've spoken to a variety of people on the telephone in different capacities, yeah. different places, and they've said, you should write a book, because I go right back to my very early childhood, and I relay so many, I weave words into, into stories. I am a word, if you like, a bit of a wordsmith, without blowing my own trumpet. Yeah. But I, I do, once I get going, you can't switch yes. me off. And I love to talk to people. I love to listen to people as well, when they can get a word in edgewise. <laughs> so, I'm not saying anything yet. <laughs> basically, I need a dictaphone or similar. Yep. Now, I cannot find the one I had for the love of... How long is that ago, uh, the oh, dictaphone? I'm knowing if you had a dictaphone. 22 years. Oh, yeah, those... Yeah, it'd be hard to find. find the old so ones. I don't know. the little cassettes as well. I've, I've got some of those, funnily okay. enough. It's, yep. the, it's the actual machine I, I'm missing. I still got my dictaphone. And I mean, the thing is, I have the nasty habit of putting stuff away safe. So safely that come when I come to need it, I cannot find it. <laughs> and it is so frustrating. This is one of my problems. I am a perfectionist, and as such, I'm in a, perf a, a perpetual state of frustration because perfectionists can never achieve their true objective, which is perfection. Yeah. That is unattainable. Uh, I always reckon... I, 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 I guess you're a perfection, uh, perfectionist towards uh, certain goals, not all, oh, yeah. all, all the goals, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I always put it that a good amateur, a caring, interested, enthusiastic amateur, is always better on any job than a professional because the amateur does it for interest, enjoyment and love of the particular thing. Whereas a professional has only got one objective, to get finished as quickly as possible, cut as many corners as they can get away with in order to get on with the next job which produces the next amount of income. Whereas the amateur is not worried about the monetary aspect, he's doing it for the interest and the love. Yep. So I'll end it here, as I know Michael wants to test our, bl our blood pressures. And I don't think mine. <laughs> I think I've got some in there, in there along with the the whiskies. Can I can I ask you one more question? You said you you were working in this uh, motor uh, well, company. Uh, what was that? I'm now what I call an official wrinkly. What the, what's an? <laughs> now, all right, you have to sorry, explain. I don't know your name. Ami. Ami. Ami will know what I mean. Yes. What Would does it mean? What, yeah, yeah, explain it. Uh, explain it. Well, basically, in this country, prior to was it this year the law came out or last year? where you were forced to retire when you were 65, men were forced to retire yeah. when they were 65. Now, this came my way in 2008, because I was born in 1943, yeah. February 21st. So, despite this, I'm 69 years of age and still going, you see. I mean, this is hereditary, but my dad always had a good head of hair. Even, yeah. He died when he was 96. And even in, though in, at that time, he still had quite a reasonable crop of hair. In his 80s, he had a beautiful head of black hair. Now, my hair when I was a child was blonde, and mm -hmm. I had long blonde wrinklets going down to my shoulders, seriously. So, basically... Yeah, so there's wrinklets. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, curly, yeah. like a girl. Yeah. And this used to drive my poor, demented mother to distraction, because we would go... In, I was born and brought up in Southport, so by birth, I'm what they call a sand grounder, which is actually third generation of Southport. So, my grandfather and my father and myself were born in Southport. And at where Southport Promenade is, which is quite a famous road, there is a road running down alongside Southport Pier. Now, in my tiny youth, childhood age, um, there was a little playground there called Peter Pan's Playground. And all the mothers used to be proudly pushing their prams with their gorgeous offspring down there, you see. And you would have queues of photographers, like ice cream men do these days at outside schools, yeah. to queue up to take photographs. Would you like photographs for your... Well, they're not going to say no, are they? You know? yeah. So my mother at home had sheets of these photographs of me, little <laughs> angelic me, about the size of a large postage stamp, with these whacking great long... Honestly, they were past my shoulders. And 
people and women would come up and say, isn't she beautiful? And she would go into orbit. <laughs> oh, she was not amused, she was in. Anyway, lovely to meet you. Yeah, lovely to meet you. Get you. My blood pressure done Thank to move you. Got to. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you were saying something now about, about Kate, the, um, no, the pictures, it's not been shown here in, in uh, England, right? In any newspaper about? No, no. No? No. And why is it's, that? It, I don't know. It, it, it's all in the papers about her taking them to court and things. Yeah, yeah. But she hasn't said, they haven't shown any paper, uh, you, pictures. Yeah, is it something, I mean, you said the son showed the Prince uh, Harry. Um, they did those, they yeah, did. Yeah, Why was the difference between Harry and, and Kate? Well, I think they've learned the lesson now, haven't they? You know, yeah. not to do it. You know what I mean? And was it There's only so the son who did it, it, or? Yeah. Yeah. So, and the son is definitely not popular no, in Liverpool. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever um, uh, sell the son here? Uh, we do sell a copy now and again, but not yeah. very often, like you know. What yeah. I mean? But some people so do ask know. it. Yeah, but I don't think they're really from around here or anything like that you know what I mean yeah yeah and because you're in the shop you can't really say to them you can't buy that yeah yeah sure you know, because but is it something that you you're not you're not putting it on display you yeah just... we have to we you have, have to. to yeah because yeah. if the area manager or anyone comes in and it's not ours yeah you, you know you're gonna get disciplined aren't you and yeah 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 you know they've got to do it so but we don't get a lot of copies do we Beth? No. yeah no. <laughs> no, that's all right. You're anonymous. <laughs> Did you ever read the Sun? No. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. Yeah. So and and um, what do you what do you think now about the 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 whole thing with Kate that uh, they shop? What do you think they are they have um, their right not to? I mean, in France, they're not gonna. They they went to justice and now of court you say mm -hmm. that yeah yeah and so they can't show the pictures yeah anymore? well she wasn't like on the beach or anything like that was yeah. she you know and maybe she's thinking what else were we doing you know do you know what I mean she's on mm -hmm. her own with him and in you know yeah in private and and when you look when when they showed it on the television it's like all secluded and everything you know and why can't you do that yourself you know yeah mm. it's not right to do it. No, and she had telescopic lens and everything. So and, she, I and believe she's got in the papers. It was yesterday. I think it was a woman, and I think she's gone into hiding or something now. Oh, it was so a I woman uh, photographer. I think so. I can't. Yeah. Because it was only glancing at the headlines. That was it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And and it it was a long distance uh, kind mm. of shot. Mm. Yeah. But they didn't show the picture of it. They just showed the the grounds and where the chateau was. Mm. There was no, you know, that was taken afterwards, I think, to show you how secluded and everything it was. Yeah. So, and she, it was in practice. I mean, she could have just got out the shower and gone past or something, couldn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah. You know? Do, do you know, um, did it change a lot, uh, What what's in the newspapers for the last... I, I'm not sure how long you've been doing this, uh, this work here. How long have you been doing uh, this? Since 2003, eight mm. years. Did it's it change? Eight years, yeah. Yeah. Nine almost. Nine. Yeah. <laughs> it's going fast. <laughs> so did it change during those nine years because you had the scandal of the of the um, the people who uh, on Hillsborough. the mobile yeah, the Hillsborough, but also I mean um, in the newspaper that they uh, was it the Sun? No, there was another um, a newspaper that recorded uh, from with spies um, recorded from telephones. Um, Oh yeah, I don't really yeah. remember much about that. No, no. no. But um, I mean, the newspapers here in in, in uh, Liverpool are they kind of different, or I mean, in the UK all over? No, they're Does all the national them? papers. Yeah. They're all the national papers that are all over the yeah. country and that you know. Not from our Echo. Yeah. The yeah. Echo is local. No, the Echo comes from Manchester now. Ah, all right, okay. Mm -hmm. So it has the, the whole area covered. So that's not very um, popular either. Really? Well, we still sell loads of it, but people would rather still have it from the local mm -hmm. echoes. Because I think, I think, I don't know whether they've shut the building down, so that's people losing jobs, isn't it? And that, yeah. And it all comes from stopped, Manchester. It's Post, Daily Post. Yeah, yeah, and that's a weekly one yeah. now. And people don't buy that. You get a big, massive bundle in of it, and then it just goes back. 
It's only like a couple of people buy. Why do you think? Well, they want. They did. Well, the news there, isn't there? Yeah, they want it daily. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Instead mm. of weekly, and it's all stuff they've all read and about it was anyway. Good post. It was like he got a little touch of what was going to be in the echo. Yeah, that day, yeah. Plus, like and what, business and news. And not things. only that, a lot of people are upset with it because um, they've shut the Maisie Mart down mm. in Liverpool. Mm. And they put it in the Echo in Manchester. So people, then that was a free newspaper coming through your so door. So the Maisie Mart up the road closed down? Yeah. So it comes, and it only comes on a Tuesday in, inside the Echo. Mm. Where it used to come through your door. Yeah. So people are paying for it now and it's a free paper. So we are here at, at uh, what's it called, the neighbourhood? Allerton. Allerton, okay. Mm. Is it uh, different than downtown Liverpool? Is it a big difference? Um, in what way do you mean? I mean, living here, is it more relaxed than going downtown? or? It's just the same all over, isn't it? You know? Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's not. I mean, people call it posh, but it's not it's just ordinary people living here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like uh, Walton Village, they call that posh, but it's not. That was all like, because I used to live up there before, when it was really a village. And because I can remember where Sainsbury's was, that was a slaughterhouse and the butchers and yeah. all things. But it was only just working class people living up there, you know, it was just that it was more farmland, so people thought it was posh. Yeah. <laughs> But it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's quite built up now. It's not really a village anymore. Yeah. All right. Mm. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're That's very nice. welcome. Yeah. Nice to meet you. We just saw you in the Oxfam shop and, uh -huh. and you you were uh, asking to be a volunteer here in the Oxfam shop? I work at the John Moores University and I was just seeing how some of, we could just make contact so some of our students could perhaps engage with Oxfam. Yeah. And you want them, uh, like, that they would be a volunteer, or...? Yeah, yeah, it's so the students can get some work experience in a local kind of, well, meaningful way. Yeah, and what do you teach? Um, I don't teach, I'm more of a student support, so ah, yeah, yeah, I yeah. kind of support the students with their work experience in, their art, in the Art and Design Academy. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, 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 so yeah, we yeah. know lots about the biennial. Yeah, 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 I saw the bag, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm branded, <laughs> aren't yeah. I? <laughs> so, but what do students mostly need in, in, um, in Liverpool, like when they arrive, or is that when well, you help them Well, it's interesting, because it, it's new, really, isn't it, for the students at the moment, so... Um, I think, I suppose they they need support. They need support with their finances because you know it's going to be huge pressure on them. But I Why? think because of the the well because uh, of the raising, way the government have yeah. raised the fees. Yeah. Uh, so they're going to need they're going to need big support through that. I think um, it's changing times. So that this coming year will really tell us the impact of that. This is the first year that the uh, the, the amount raised that much. Yeah, it's the first year that oh, the students right. are now yeah. having to pay nine nine grand yeah. for a year for their for their tuition. So it, it, it's going to be interesting to see what how and also how that impacts on the rest of society because if the students are more limited, you know, some of the taxi drivers and some of the local services were kind of hinting that the students weren't using them as much and maybe students are just being a bit more careful. Yeah. You know, and you've got to remember that that's that's a big economy for local businesses when the students arrive and engage yeah. with local services. How, how many students are there in the uh, I don't know, here? a good few thousand. Yeah. There's a good few thousand that descend on the city for a good nine months of the year. So that kind of um, government decision kind of influence a lot of the communities. It's going to influence, yeah, and we're already starting to feel the impact of, you know, the cuts all over a friend of mine was telling me that the, the school buses in where, where she lives have been cut so you've now got kids on the normal services which is just causing absolute havoc and mayhem so i think people are going to start getting quite angry well and i kind of hope so i hope that kind of makes yeah. them take action you know yeah. we do kind of hope there so. was no action at all but... yeah yeah there is action but it, it kind of just it, it doesn't seem to be making much of an impact and the, I think a lot of things have shifted onto the internet, so we all tick boxes on, yeah, yeah, yeah. on Facebook like and, and go, yeah, I'm going to do this, and then, and then we all kind of sit back and go, I wonder how that's going. So I kind of hope that, yeah, we, we can sort of take more action. And the students were brilliant because they actually hit the streets and, you know, there has been a lot of people taking to the streets, but I think we need to do it en masse. 
Yeah. yeah. Like you mean like protesting scale? Yeah. When streets? you hear about the um, uncuts and and yeah. uh, the Occupy Wall Street, they're kind of having. Um, They're, they're all having a, another kind of annual kind of meeting and, and just what I've seen images on Facebook of lots of people hitting the streets and I think, you know, we could we could certainly take a note out of Spain and Portugal and yeah. out of their book. Yeah. Okay. okay that was it. was you. a short one. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> um, you're not a sailor, are you? No, 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 no. What did you do? Lorry lorry driver, coach driver. That's why I still wear me that's why I still wear the badges. Oh yes. Bus, the hour buses, coaches. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Used to be coach driver, he used to go all right. England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, France, Belgium, Germany, Spain. Driving. All right. Yeah. Did you drive um, pa package tours? Holidays, yeah. You know, to yeah. Carella and uh, Blanus and. can't think the names now. It's three and, I've been retired three and a half years, you know. Mm. Yeah. So you get to know them all? I, I did do, yeah. No, I didn't get to know the passengers because you only took them for two weeks holiday, and then you do another trip in between, and then you take them. You took two weeks for either. You bring them home. You had two drivers on it because by law you have to have two drivers. You see, because it's too too far for one driver. Yeah. Yeah. So is that a camera? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a very small. Well, where's camera. your microphone? Where's your uh, recorder? That, that's the microphone. That's got recorder, isn't it? Well, this doesn't do. This does a bit of sound, but that's a better yeah. quality sound recording. Oh, so I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have to put it all together. Yeah. In the, uh, in the yeah. I'm doing well sitting outside here in the sun today. It's lovely, yeah. isn't it? It's like yeah. you're in Spain. I'll be so getting a bronzy. <laughs> so you're a Liverpool supporter. Yeah, yeah. You only got good eyes. Uh, <laughs> How it is now with the new There's only manager. two. There's only two footballs in in Liverpool. You know, two football teams. Do you know that? Liverpool and Everton? No, 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 Liverpool and Liverpool Reserves. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you got me? Mind you, was it... Which was the first one? You, you'll have to you'll have to explain to me. Um, but I believe that... Was it Everton came the, out of Liverpool? or Liverpool? No, Liverpool, Everton started first, like, yeah. Yeah. They were called St. Domingo or something, so And then you copied us. And then they moved across the park to Goodison Park. And Liverpool took over their old ground, so I believe. Mm. What I've read, yeah. Do you go to the matches? Pardon? Do you go? To no, not now. I played a lot of football myself, you know. Okay. Amateur football, yeah. Played three games a week: Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. And when I worked on the buses, we had what you call the representative team. Sometimes we played all over the country. They're called the PSV Cup. PSV means Public Service Vehicle, and they had a cup. We played a. Birmingham buses and we play say Sunderland buses and so forth. Were you in the Premier League of the buses then? Well no they were just called like the, the Zingari League at the time, Zingari, yeah. Is it still going? Is that still well I should imagine it is but I've retired three and a half years and got a, I haven't played football for 40 years. <laughs> yeah. Well listen you'll have to excuse you now because I'm going in for another pint.